Hi everyone. Um, so since this is more of an APAC um, APAC presentation, I suppose it's good morning for almost everyone um, joining. So thank you very much for um, spending time with us this morning. So this will be just as you can see, it's customer insights in an hour. We'll be covering the intersection of customer expectations and technology and how customer insights um, provides value into this. So as Nina has mentioned, um, for our housekeeping uh, notes, uh, feel free to raise your questions. And we have panelists and proctors who are joining this session who can take on and respond to the questions even if our webinar is ongoing. Okay. So we will be covering as part of our agenda in today's webinar, we'll cover a, an overview of Hitachi as to who we are, um, focusing on customers and customer how to build a customer 360 degree view and how we engage with the customers using customer insights and finally the convenience that we have with the modern data platform and we will conclude it with a Q&A session if you would have any questions towards the end uh, and of course closing. So let me just introduce myself before we continue. So as mentioned earlier, my name is Johanna Reynada Rabina. I am a, a senior director on our CRM practice. I'm based here in Manila. And this, um, but we are offering services across um, Asia Pacific. And my focus areas would include Dynamics 365 customer engagement. And that um, includes the module on sales, marketing, and customer service. Uh, there is also a a focus on field service. Then we have the robotics process automation or RPA. We have retail loyalty. And I also have a um, strong background on banks and fins um, solutions. We also have digital transformation, our platform and social engagement. And overall, I have about 15 years of experience in the CRM space. And this is across uh, multiple verticals. So for Hitachi um, Limited, so we are Hitachi Solutions, yes, but we belong to the bigger group, which we call Hitachi Limited. Um, on a nutshell, this group has about 303,000 employees globally, and we are made up of 864 companies, and 677 of this um, are residing outside Japan. And we are ranked as number 102 in Fortune Global 500, and to be very specific, we are ranked as number eight in the technology companies of Fortune Global 500 as well. And in terms of presence, uh, we are across 100 countries on different locations. Now, with this Hitachi, this is the same brand that's very familiar in your household. So it's the same Aircon brand that we see. It's the same heavy equipment brand that, that you're familiar with. And so with this, let me just show you the different um, segments in the in the line of businesses that we offer. So we have 21.6, um, that's our presence and investment around information and telecommunication systems. We have 25.5% around social infrastructure and industrial systems. We have about 12.8% um, on electric systems and equipment. So technically with all of this, the main focus really is on the red dot right here, the 21.6% which is on information and telecommunication systems. This is where we belong. And by we, I mean Hitachi Solutions Limited. Now Hitachi Solutions Limited is a member of the big Hitachi umbrella. And our main um, service, uh, the main service that we provide is really on implementing systems, understanding business needs, understanding organization pain points, and converting them into solutions that would work best with um, what you need or what your workforce would be needing. So in this group, we are about 3,000 strong um, globally, and we are 100% focused on Microsoft, and we are across 14 countries. So for Hitachi Solutions, being that we are focused on Microsoft, it gave us the ability to come up with solutions that are um, specific to certain verticals or industries. So we will take a look at that around the capabilities on what solutions have we built um, that, it, that stays on top of the Microsoft stack. But before we cover the capabilities, just to show the presence and um, how big we are 
uh, globally. So we are, um, as you can see here, we are headquartered in Japan. So that's one of the um, one of the locations where we have um, more resources. Um, but we are big in India. We are 700 strong in India. Then followed by um, Europe and Japan that has 500. And for us, particularly, we belong to the purple purple dot right there for Southeast Asia and ANZ. So we are about 300 in this um, in this uh, region. And our our model in providing services works more on uh, we provide onshore and offshore resources. So we have resources um, we we have resources from your actual location, but we also bring in resources coming from different regions. So what we are saying here is that we are, yes, we are big. Our company is big enough to support um, your organization's requirements, but we're also small enough to listen and to really work with your team locally to come up with the best solution for your organization. And right now I'm just showing the Microsoft awards that we have. And um, as you can see, we have been 42 times uh, awarded as the Mar Microsoft Partner of the Year, out of which 15 times Microsoft Inner Circle, 15 times Microsoft Gold Partner, et cetera. So just very recently, as of 2019, we've been awarded as Partner of the Year for the D365 for Field Service, as well as for Global Government. Now, what's really important in this is that we would like to share that these are not just about the um, about bragging or the accolades that we have right here, but it's really more on um, just sharing with you and it's proof that there is excellence in our implementation because as a background, um, Microsoft will be awarding this um, this accolades through two main KPIs. And this would be, they measure the productivity as well as the revenue. And it's not the vendor or the partner's um, metrics that they're checking but it's the, the client organization to which we have implemented our systems for. So out of the productivity and the revenue that's been generated by the organizations that we have implemented the systems for, that's how we were selected um, as partner um, of the year. So to us, we believe that this is proof of the excellence that we have on the implementation um, space. And I was talking about the capabilities earlier. So um, as you can see uh, on the first column, this for, for technology, we have implementation capabilities around uh, mostly, of course, because it's Microsoft, we have dynamic ERP, we have CRM, we have business intelligence and analytics, we have field service automation, we have portals and collaboration. And because we're focused 100% on Microsoft, we built solutions that are focused to certain industries. And these are what we call the Hitachi IP right here. And this Hitachi IP, um, as mentioned, caters to this industry expertise column right here. So these are the solutions that we have built on top of the Microsoft stack. So we have retail, we have transport, transportation and maritime, we have financial services. So this would include banks and pins um, and insurance. And then we have professional services and real estate. We have manufacturing and we have healthcare. Also in terms of managing people, we have services around change leadership and management. We also have around training and for consensus methodology. And in terms of managed services, we also offer application management and support, as well as hosting and management and global development center. So all in all, this is the strong um, product knowledge and expertise that we have and we bring what we bring to you is a global best practice that can be implemented locally. Okay, so now I'm ready to jump into um, the focus on the customers. Uh, so this is, this is we, we ask ourselves what really customer insights is about. So customer insights is really more about 360 degree view of the customer. We can call it like the advanced customer, um, customer view, advanced customer 360 degree view. And around that, we first try to understand that speaking of uh, customer insights and its importance, it spans across different verticals we're in because we know everyone has customers. So we do have customers around customer engagement, retail, banking, and insurance. So it can be used for that. It can also be used on the space of patient and clinical 
clinician engagement healthcare. We also have citizen engagement, social, government, and nonprofit. And around tenant management, we have residential and commercial. We also have property management. And also, it can cater to vendor and partner engagement. So this would be this would include the likes of services, supply chain, and manufacturing. So simply put, anything that would be customer centric um, would would be would find customer insights useful. And with these customers that we have um, at this uh, time, it's been discovered that engagement is the key. So out of the studies and observations, it's found that 83% of customers are willing to share their data um, just so uh, we can, or organizations can enable a more personalized experience. And also 81% of buyers would want brands to get to know them and understand them when to approach them and when not to approach them as well. So this is very, timing is very of, of utmost importance right here. And 65% of consumers are frustrated by inconsistent experiences across channels. So I'm pretty sure each one of us joining uh, this session right now is very familiar and would agree with the statistic because at one point or another, we have been contacted by uh, people offering us items, uh, offering us services. And also there would be instances wherein we have called certain organizations for customer support. And um, we know that out of this, what's best is to have the appropriate service that we're looking for at the quickest time possible. And so with, with this, um, it's all about the customer experience really. So more on the statistics from those observations, um, we have, or it's also been detected that there are 62% of the customers um, who have switched brands in the past year and just mainly because of poor customer service. And there's also 65% of customers who find positive experience to be more influential than, adver than great advertising. So um, with this, uh, in, in fact, in one of three, in every three customers, there's one that will walk away from a brand that they love um, just after one bad experience. So as you see, the customer experience has been very demanding and that's been more, it's, it's really been proven to be a meaningful focus for organizations in order to thrive in their business. And so with this, more than half of the U.S. customers have said that the customer experience at most companies would need improvement. And finally, um, out of the top performing companies, it's been reported that the key to their success is that they have been paying close attention to the human experience around digital and technology. And so there's about 82% in fact of that. Now, with all those um, customer uh, customer information, yeah, we have uh, we know that that's been the trend now. But how do we really address that? So in the customer 360 degree view, in the succeeding um, section, we will understand how we can come up with an advanced customer 360 degree view that we can use um, around this. So in this, what's more important to note is that in in the customer 360 degree view, the three main grouping that we would have uh, would be more on transactional, behavioral, and demographic. But before we continue, let me just, um, let's just try to go through and understand the evolution of customer 360 degree view. So it all um, is being focused on CRM. And pre previously, we all started with the different sources of customer, in, uh, customer information and that would include web, mobile, store, and field service. Then we had contact center. So the call center um, served a purpose more for after sales support, but also it has evolved to become a point of sales as well. So we have been doing upselling and cross-selling through the contact center. And then there was another wave that came in where in, uh, which we call customer engagement. So the customer engagement expanded to the different social media um, uh, channels so we have from this, uh, from let's say Facebook, Twitter, um, Spotify, LinkedIn, we're able to get customer information. So this includes um, information on demographics as well as behavioral information. Then with this, uh, then came the digital transformation. So all this information that we had before we just use it for um, conventional servicing, conventional sales, conventional support, but now it has, uh, it has now evolved into uh, the dig digital transformation that feeds data into the data lake 
and uses AI and machine learning, then it also in, involves now augmented re realities where um, we're able to see them, we're able to see work remotely and look at the actual situation even if we're not there. And then we also, this aided with uh, knowledge management has provided excellent um, support, customer support, more so on the contact center. And with this advancement came, of course, advanced analytics, because we have information that are coming from the machine learning, from our data lake, as well as a product of the digital transformation. And because of this, we're now able to use bots around most especially on chatbots. So um, a lot of the organizations now are using um, chatbots wherein uh, this are being manned, of course, by just templated responses um, through this bots that have been configured. And finally, in the digital transformation, if it used to be just one way from CRM to digital transformation, now it has become two way because we're now able to give the system actionable insights. And that's where customer insights would come in. Um, customer insights serves as one of this improvement or changes in the evolution of the customer 360 view, uh, wherein we're able to provide back information for suggested actions or let's say product recommendations and uh, whatever actionable insights we can forward to be more, uh, to give a more meaningful experience to our customers. And now if you notice, um, we then had a two-way, uh, automatically a two-way uh, uh, direction here of the data. So if it used to be just coming from this source as going into CRM, now we're able to send it forward. So these are in the forms of um, campaigns in marketing, in the forms of proactive um, service, in terms of customer service, and of course in selling. And with this came IoT as well. So IT, IoT now would um, provide information into the data lake, and this information would be those that have been uh, taken from sensors. So this would be, let's say, ingress or egress of people, people coming in and out of establishments or branch visits. Then there's also information coming from wearables, as well as um, with this process, it gives telematics information um, that are coming from field service then to IoT. So this now, as you can see, starting with a very simple data model of a customer 360 degree view, it has now expanded all because of the digital transformation that has brought about a lot of advancements in, advancements in the um, data processing. And so customer insights being one of this envisions the service to be, um, in, to be intended or to be empowering every organization to unify and understand its customer data to derive insights that power personalized experiences and processes. So what this is, is customer insights is getting information from apps and channels of engagement, as you can see here. And from this channels of engagements, it provides data or it allows us to have a 360 degree view of customers. And from this 360 degree view of customers, we're able to slice and dice them, group them, so that we would, we would be able to come up with meaningful actions to, by, by grouping them into um, demographic information, transactional information, and behavioral information. So of course we have from uh, the likes of any information that we have on the, on the system for a customer falls under demographics. So we have information around the name, contact information, marital status, um, and, and all of those um, dem demographic data. Then with that comes transactional information. So this would be the transactions coming or information coming from our POS, from our website, so for all of the purchases that our clients have, uh, have made. And finally, supported with behavioral, this includes, um, this information includes um, those that have been their reaction towards the services that we have uh, given them, or basically just out of their exploration. So this helps us understand what they're looking for, hence be, being able to give the best recommendation or product recommendation at the right time. So we will be going through, for customer insights, we'll be going through uh, three different personas. This will be Dog the Data Dude, who is the data engineer extraordinaire. And we have Alex, the analytics ace. Then we also have Maria, the marketing maven. 
So just very quickly, let's go through the customer insights and how they go about this process. So here we have the different phases for customer insights would include data, unification, insight, and action. And with this, it starts with ingestion. So first, we bring in customer and activities data through finished and configurable connectors. We'll see that later on in the, uh, we'll have a demo on how this is being done. Then of course, we, uh, we follow through with a mapping and matching. This is when we identify and understand the customer profile data from all the sources. So because we have different source, data sources of this information, we need to be able to match them and correlate them, and of course, efficiently merge them in order to identify that this is one and the same customer. Then uh, in doing that, uh, we, it's followed by conflation. So that is, that is on the unification um, stage where we consolidate um, into 360 degree customer profiles with source lineage. And finally, we enrich that with, pro, uh, we enrich the profiles with Microsoft proprietary and strategic sources. So this would be let's, the likes of Adobe, et cetera. And then it moves then to converting it into insights. So it gives us out of the box customer journey insights and allows us to do embedded customer card or experience preparations. And finally, we act on them. So this is where we have the customer profile that's already been built out of the unified data after understanding what they need, after understanding the demographic, the behavioral and transactional data, we're able to come up with the customer, the custom insights and actions for these particular customers, as well as do a segmentation for them um, in, for the purpose of either a promotional campaign or ser support services that we're gonna have. So now let's start off with um, with the data engineer. And so we have we have the different sources for the customer from different sources. Uh, this can be external or internal. And you can see here that most of it are coming from uh, social media. But this categorization of data includes uh, or, or are in two ways. So there's internal information and there's external information. External obviously would be around. Uh, the sources that are not controlled by us. So this would be um, just about anything that we get through the internet. So we have the credit ratings, we have the surveys, we have the loyalty, we have event, events, we have partner data. And those would be the transactional part. Now on the behavioral part, we look at how they, uh, we, we look at their preferences, we look at how they, well, how they transact essentially. And that's through information coming from Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, geolocation, or even Wi-Fi. And then we mix it with our internal information, which would be in the, in the transactional part, we have campaigns, we have leads, we have activities, we have purchases that have been made by the client as well as the cases. And of, of course, on the behavioral, we have their web interactions. So that's coming from our website. We have their email interactions. We have the mobile app data and we have the gamification as well as the IOT data. So now, in this ingestion, what it simply means is that we're getting information from these different sources and putting them into the system for customer insights to process and lead to uh, meaningful uh, information for us. Okay, so now next, so we had the data engineer um, process all those uh, through the ingestion. Now we go to the next one, which is the analytics, um, analytics ACE. Uh, and with this, we, he is responsible for doing the mapping, the matching, and the merging. So just as an example, there is information coming in from the mobile app, and we have Stephen Smith, we have the name, we have the phone, we have the date of birth, we have the address, there is no loyalty number, and there is in, no e email information. Now, from our um, e-commerce side, we have information around Stephen Smith, we have the date of birth, we have the state, then we also have loyalty number. There is no phone provided, but there's also, but there is an email. Then the third one would be the information that came in from our POS systems. There we're able to identify the name. So we have Stephen Smith, we have the date of birth. There is no location, but there is a loyalty number and there is no phone provided and there's also no email. So then the challenge here is because we have disparate systems, how do we then um, create a profile that would help us identify that all this three information belongs to one and the same person. So this is this is what 
Alex, the analytics dude, would be processing, and that is being controlled through the evaluation engine, rules evaluation engine. So in customer insights, we can build um, matching rules, we can build mapping rules, and then merging rules as well. So with this mapping and matching rules, um, this resides in the rules evaluation engine, processes them, and gives us a unified information that we are looking at one and the same Stephen Smith, who is born on the 4th of March, 1980. He is from Denver. His loyalty number is 0034455, and he has his phone number as 555-455-3633, with an email address of smith at, at xyx.com. So now in Customer Insight, we're able to see that single information. Imagine what this would um, benefit us if we're able to just simply do this simple step and send it over to our different systems and act on them. So there's, all, there's already the um, cleansing of the data as well as making um, meaningful, you know, uh, meaningful data for our workforce. Then we have conflation. So in here, we're, we're combining this different information that we have. So for example, for Stefan Smith's case, what's happening was that um, we have the name that's coming from the mobile, uh, mobile app. Then we have the date of birth still from the mobile app source. Then we have the location that is coming from our e-com source. We have the loyalty number that's coming from the POS. We have the phone um, coming from the mobile app and then the email address coming from e-com. So with all this uh, different sources, so information coming in from different sources can now be segregated and can be conflated into a single customer record. Now that we have unified them, as we call it, because we have already matched um, and merged them, uh, we will now go to enriching, uh, to the enrichment part. So on the enrichment part, um, it goes to the third persona, which is Maria, who is in charge of the campaign, who is the campaign maven. So Maria now takes a look at the, of this unified information. She takes a look at the aggregated behavioral information. And there's the machine learning models creation and trained machine learning model as well. So technically what we're saying here is the information coming from customer insights that has been cleansed and unified, we're able to have them processed through our machine learning models that we've created in Azure. And with this, we're able to um, provide or uh, send out actions that would be appropriate for this particular customer. And with this, we will then add segments. The segments would be the groupings of these customers. So in, in this case, we have Stephen Smith um, who, from Denver, et cetera. So these are his demographics. We can then create a segment out of his customer profile, or later on, we can also do it through certain measures or certain analytics that we're able to discover from the system. And finally, with Maria, Maria now is able to convert this into um, insights. So the KPIs rolls over into aggregated KPIs, helps us identify the different trends and patterns, and helps us bring the individual insight we're in. You can now see coming, uh, starting off with the demographics of so the name, the lifetime value, um, the average cart size, the segment, down to what is the recommended product for uh, Stephen Smith. So here, um, the system has helped us identify that the recommended product for him would be the widget model 003. And because we have those information, we are now able to act on them. Uh, we can put them in a list and we can have product recommendations, we can have dy dynamic marketing campaigns built uh, for it, as well as lead generation and scoring. So this has been pretty set up in your system. Now, what the system does is with that information being processed for Stefan, it will now um, group Stefan accordingly to the different um, different product recommendations that uh, that is uh, suitable for him, as well as the campaigns, promotional campaigns that would be most appropriate for him. And then it, this is pushed over to the, the different channels that we have, which is mostly for social media and the like. So now we have seen that was just to talk about the customer insight model and how the data is being processed from this different persona. So next we'll, we will see a demo, a short demo of how these are being done through an actual um, live demo environment and um, get to understand further what we were just talking about earlier. Now, just before we, we go there, 
Um, the engagement in customer insights uh, has a scenario of Contoso Coffee, who is one who has two separate systems, uh, that's POS and e-commerce, uh, for transactions. And they also have a loyalty program run by a third party. And what they really want to happen is to unify the information so that they can drive better engagement across these channels. And with this, it would involve efforts around unifying the customer information across sources. So that's where we do mapping, matching, and thresholds. Then we have the KPIs, um, identification. So we have the creation and behavior. And finally, we have the segmentation. So here we will be creating the customer segment. So right now, I will be showing you, um, the, coming from a demo environment, how this will be done and how Contoso Coffee can, can go about this process. So we're going by uh, the average spend and all those, uh, and et cetera. At this point, we will be simulating a customer insight project wherein we will be first ingesting the data from the highest priority data, data sources from within the business. So this would be the likes of um, point of sale or POS, loyalty data, e-commerce customers and web purchases. And, it's, uh, and the likes. But for the purpose of the demo, we're just gonna be simulating one. So let's go with the e-commerce customers. And with this, um, following that, uh, assuming we already have all the information, all we have already um, done the data ingestion, uh, we will then configure and realize a unified customer profile from all this ingested data. So we'll be doing, you will see later on that we'll be doing matching, Mer uh, well, mapping, matching, and merging. And then um, next to that, we'll be configuring businesses and customer measures in the customer insights. And this is to identify customers with higher than average spend in store and online. And finally, we'll be building segments out of this measures. And this is for the marketers to deliver personalized and targeted marketing communications. So let's start right there now, and we click on add data source. Right now we will be importing data. So the sources will be coming from different systems, but in this case, let's just call it this, the e-commerce, e-commerce customers. Then here you will see the different source data sources that are available so right now it's showing all categories but if we take a look at the uh, different types so on the file type we have or we can use excel csv folder xml sharepoint pdf then on the databases we also have access right here we have vertica we have oracle database amazon sap hana and all the others. And then of course we have power platforms. So this would be the common data service. So this allows us to connect to Dynamics 365, Power Apps, Power Automate, etc. And then of course Azure. So we have Azure Blobs, we have um, Azure Data Lake, Storage, Gen2, Azure Tables, etc. And then we have online services as well that includes Salesforce, SharePoint Online, Microsoft Exchange Online, and of and other sources as well. We have Active Directory, OData, SharePoint, um, still Web API, and Spark. So for here, just for the purpose of example, let's just select um, text or CSV for that. And I have prepared the source right here already. So let's just hit on next right there. So that's a URL that's coming from Azure Blob. Now we see the data. So you have all the information right here, but let's first transform the data. So it's giving us that raw data um, coming from that Excel file. So you can just imagine that it's coming from another source um, with all those uh, information there. Now here we can see that uh, it says for the header column one, column two, column three, column four, five, six, and seven, and etc. But on the values, you would see that there's the, it seems like it's the ID, contact ID for the first column, followed by the first name, the last name, full name. Now here, I want to change this to have 
the first row right here to be the header because that's rightfully uh, the headers, in, um, which would be handy when it comes to mapping. So let me just do that. And then let's select for use first row as headers. And we can now see that the, the header now is contact ID, first name, last name, full name, date of birth, and the rest. Now in this data that you're seeing, um, these are, this are tabulated and you can configure the data types and formats for the data that you ingest. So you will notice that the column heading right now has appeared in the first row of the data. And just to correct it, because it's more just um, text right now, these are all of text type. Let's just correct a couple right here, wherein um, let's go to the date of birth and I want to change that from text. I want it to be date slash time. And then next, so it changes the, the type right there. Now next, let's go to create it on. So it's still on text. So let me just change that. And I want to change it to date, time, and zone. Now let me rename it to e-commerce contacts, hit a next. So notice how the, the query name has changed right here from queries or from query earlier, it, it's now set to e-commerce contacts. So it's currently um, loading and it's transforming the data now we see that it's been added. So earlier we only had two data sources, now there are three, but we see that it's still refreshing, so it continues to process that. It's, it may take a while, uh, depending on the size of the data that you're um, ingesting. Okay, let's just wait for a bit more. And now it's telling us it's successful. So let's just take a quick look at it. Okay. And now we see the information that, um, we now see the information that came from our CSV file. Okay, so here we have the first name, last name, full name, all of those information and the changes we made um, on the data types. So we have just completed the data ingestion. Now we're ready for the next step, which is to unify them so we can come up with a unified customer profile. So assuming that we have now completed the data ingestion, so we have the different sources now, we have information coming from our dynamic system, from our POS, from our website, um, as well as the terms course. Now we are ready to unify them. So let's go to unify. On the, the main steps of data unification would involve mapping, matching, and merging. On a nutshell, what we're trying to do here is from the information that we have ingested, we are now trying to create a unified customer profile. And in order to do that from this different sources of data that we have in the system, we first will have to map them we will be identifying as to who will be the primary entity, as well as which other entities will we be matching it with and merging it. So right now we can see that on the dynamics that serves as our primary entity, and we have uh, POS customers and website users as well. So from here, from our dynamics contacts, we first have to identify the primary ID or the primary key. And in this case, it would be the contact ID for the dynamics contacts. Now let's go to POS customers and let's identify the loyalty ID as our uh, primary key. And then of course, for website users, we will be using user ID as the primary key. So now that we have identified it, we have mapped all the fields and you can see that on the country, that's the field name, we have selected the type. So you, you see the different types right here. Now we are ready to match all the data. So let's go to the match, match section. Here you can see that there's a number reflected under unique customers. There's also a number for matched records. So 
technically, um, what I'm seeing right now is for my primary entity, which is the Dynamics Contacts, in total, there's about 10,000 records. And I am comparing it against, or I'm matching it against, another data um, record, which is POS Customers, and the size would be 10,000 as well. And of course, the website users, which would be another 10,000 data set. Now we can see here that it's telling us that the records have matched for 100% and we have selected one rule. Then we can take a look at the last round that was made and we can see here that there is information on the Dynamics Contacts ID, Dynamics Contacts information such as email, full name, and telephone number. So these are the information that we're trying to compare against the data, two other data sets. So, here, next we, we can see the, the conflation match pairs, and it's telling us that it's email and full name, and it's giving us a confidence score of 100%, then followed by the second data set. So we have the POS information right here uh, that shows the email, uh, email information to which we are comparing it with. And finally, we see the website information, which has the tele, which should have the telephone number, which we are comparing it with. So technically, this is the result of the last run that was made. Now, let's just try to understand further the information that comprised um, this. Now, let's just uh, go to the edit mode of this POS customer data set right here. As you can see, we have uh, the POS customers, the rule order is one. Um, the rule name is email plus full name, and then it has 100% records matched. Now let's take a quick look at the results for this. So the match preview shows us, again, a, a perfect confidence score, and we have the dynamics contact information. So we have the email, full name, as well as the POS email and full name as well. Now let's try to understand the setup by going to uh, the conditions. So we can see here that there are two conditions that have been defined. The first condition is on, is telling us to check on the Dynamics Contacts email and compare it against the POS customer's email. And in here we can see that the precision level is set to basic and it is set to high. So what this is telling us or what the purpose for this particular um, set up right here or setting right here is to help identify the level of uh, detail that you would like to check your match against. So in cases of, let's say you're offering financial services and the like, you would want to have it under set up under exact or at least high. What, that is, the, what the system will do is it will ensure that you really have a close comparison and an exact comparison of, of your data. However, if you are using this um, for the purposes of marketing, so if you are trying to get um, a unified customer information and you are trying to get um, details around the behavior of the customers, then you may want to have it set to low where it would mean that just about any or at least one that will qualify on your condition, then it will be now counted as a match. So right now we are saying that it has to be exactly a match. And now let's take a preview of it. Here we can see that, um, so there's, because it's 100%, we see that there's a total of 10,000 um, match and the details are shown here. So we see the Dynamics email value compared with the POS email value. We see all of that there. And we can always download that as a CSV. So this is the first match that we're trying to check. Now next, let's go to the second condition of this first match. So the second condition is to compare the full name of uh, from Dynamics, compare it with the full name from the POS customers. Again, it's telling us that uh, we need to get an exact match. And if we take a preview at that, in this second condition of match one, it's, telling, it's once again giving us um, a perfect 10,000 matched um, records and we have the information on the full name from Dynamics as well as the full name from POS. Now let's take a look at the second rule that we have set up. So the second rule is comprising of the website users. 
Now, if we take a quick look at the results, we see that here, so we see the dynamics information, we see the website information, and we are comparing the phone number, and we're getting a high con confidence score. So the conflation match pair um, is giving us 100%. So if we take a closer look at that, we can see here that right, right at this rule, it's telling us that we're comparing the full name and the telephone between the two data sets. Now, for the, con for, for the first condition, we're comparing, again, the full name of, di of the Dynamics data compared with the full name of the website users. It has an, a high precision level or an exact precision level, rather, that's been set up. Let's take a preview. In the same way, it's giving us the same information, but this time around, it's the full name from the contacts as well as the full name from the website. Then followed by the second condition, wherein it's comparing the telephone uh, value coming from the Dynamics uh, data set and comparing it with the website user's telephone value with a, an exact precision again. So if we take a preview, here we see the comparison between the two as well. Now that we're done um, checking on the match and we've fully set that up, let's now go to, we're ready to merge them. Now in merging these records, what the system will do is it will create a new entity. And in this entity, you will have to identify the fields where the reconciliation of all, uh, well, of course, if it's a match, then there wouldn't be any problem. But if there will be um, different information, then the, then the reconciliation of this will have to be done there. Now, as an example, so you can see here the postcode, email address, CD, et cetera. So these are the fields that we have matched. And let's take a look at the setup here. So for the first name, we've, set, we've mentioned that, or we've set it up that um, in terms of ranking, it has to follow the Dynamics Contacts first name first, then followed by the POS, um, the, the customer record from the POS, then the website users from the website. All of the first name values will have to be compared. If it's a match, well and good, but if there would be conflicts, then we can always use uh, the first rank, which is the Dynamics um, record. Now here we can always either separate them or remove them. The same is true as being done for the last name, as you can see here, and the full name, so etc. So for as, as long as how many records you would want to uh, map into this new um, entity, you will have to set, up, set, set it up in here. And once again, of course, it has a reference to the different IDs, primary keys of the three data sets that we are um, combining. Now, assuming we have already done the merge and we have already done the unification, um, so that means we'd have to run this. And uh, because this is a demo environment that's already been run, now let's take a look at the unified information from the customer profile. Okay, so now we have the customer records and these are, these are what we call uh, the customer cards. And we see, so we have Margaret Tuff, we have Susan Kate. So from these cards right here, if in case I just wanna take, uh, I wanna have a quick search on it, and I want to see customers that are from California, and I just wanna put in the postcode right there, so 49982, if I do that, then the, at, the, at the top, so let's 49982 rather, And if I do that, it's giving me Susan Kate, and the state is California. So the searching capabilities would be there. We can always set up the search capabilities by identifying the fields that I would want to make a search on, on this uh, setup right here. Now let's take a quick look at Margaret Duff right here. So for Margaret Duff, you can see that on the user profile, you have information on the merged records or merged um, fields. So here you can see all of those and you can see the source as well. So you can see that these are the information coming from Dynamics and these are the information coming from the POS record. And they're identified accordingly. And then I also um, am seeing information on the timeline right here in terms of activities of these customers, uh, of this particular customer rather. 
So I see that, so you could imagine that this is now being integrated with different systems. So with different data sources giving information. And from that, um, customer insights would give us a, a summary of the interactions that the customer has had. So we can see here that Margaret has one case, five website reviews, 51 email activities, and three POS purchases, as well as three online purchases. Now, these are the information right here um, with timestamps on the activity that have been, um, or the interaction that has happened. And right here, we see the different affiliations. So these are information coming from um, Microsoft's proprietary, uh, proprietary data that um, where we have information that are being compared against other similar um, profiles. Now, let's take a quick look at this little boxes right here. So these are what we call the measures. We'll get to understand later on what measures are, but right now it's telling us that Margaret has a churn risk of 0 0.9128, as well as a total online spend of 138. And this is um, based out of three online um, purchases. So from here, let me just take a quick look at what comprised the online spend. It says it has three. So if I go back to the timeline right here and I use the filter, I just wanna use, or I just wanna check on online purchases. And it's giving me just that. It reduced my timeline to just the information that I have filtered it for. Now let me clear that. At this point, let us just take a closer look at the total online spend measure here. So again, as I mentioned, it's called measure and the measures would be different um, setup that you're gonna get uh, from the system. Okay. Considerably in the measures, um, these are identified or defined as um, that feature that allows you or enables you to define performance indicators or KPIs. Now, uh, there are two ways of setting it up. It can either be a customer related measure. So what we were seeing earlier on the average, um, what you see on the customer record right there on the average spend, that is um, classified as a customer related measure. And there's also the second one, which we call the business health measure. So on the business health measure, we will see that later on once we get to the customer insight dashboard. But right now, let's just try to understand the measures that we have here. The measures are also um, called, or they're known to be query builder wizards as well. So what it does basically is it calculates from a series of interactions that you would have. So as mentioned, there are different sources and with this, these are considered different activities or interactions. Now from this interactions or customer touch, touch points, it calculates the behavior. So these are um, the likes of purchases in the system or a customer service case creation or an email um, sent or received or even um, phone calls that have been made. And that may also include branch visits. Now, right here, we mentioned, uh, we were looking at the total online spend, which is a customer attribute. So let's just take a closer look at that. Now, this is the total value of to to total online spend that we have. And these are the values right here. Now, for the information that we were that we saw on Margaret's record, this helps us understand that it was derived out of the online purchases that are coming from the dynamic source, um, we, we were taking a look specifically at the price and we added it all up. And it was, we, and the label is, uh, we identified it as total online spend. So technically it's just a price for all the online purchases that was made and we've summed it all up and called it total online spend. And because we've identified it to be a business uh, or a customer attribute, then it shows on the customer profile or the unified customer profile. Now next, let's take a look at the other information that we saw there. Uh, there was the churn risk. Now on the churn risk, if we take a look at that, we see here that it's 
taking it from a different entity, which is the turns course. And what it's doing is that it's just getting the scored probabilities coming from that related entity, and it's just adding it all up. So that's why it's come to 0.9 as the turn risk for Margaret. Now, we, we, we said there are, this is a customer attribute, but there are also business attributes or what we call the business health measures. Now, let's just take a quick look at that. Let's go to the average online, average online spend per customer. The average online spend per customer is right here. And it's what it's telling us is that we're trying to measure from customer insights the total online spend of all the customer records and we are taking the average for it and we are calling it the average online spend per customer so just to take uh, just just to understand this further on the practical sense let's go to the dashboard now from this customer insights dashboard we see of course the insights so here we can see the average online spend per customer. So it's a total of 806 right now. And it's being taken from another measure, which is the total online spend for all customers, which is about 8 million at this time. And of course, we have the average churn score. So these insights that you're seeing right here are what we call the business health measures that have been created. I've so we've shown or we've seen the setup for one. Now, if we look further then, uh, looking into segments, uh, we see here that there are uh, four segments in this dashboard. Now, segments in, in customer insights would mean it's a certain grouping of, uh, of customers. The main purpose for these segments is to uncover cohorts of customers with similar attributes. And, uh, well, right now you can see that in this segment right here, this is for customers with open cases. You can see that there's about 8,432 members belonging there. And we can also see that uh, there's 314 members that, ha that, that falls under average spend high churn. That there's 6,812 members that would have that, uh, well, customers who have given a low, low review score. And in total, we have about 10,000 members. Now, this um, groups right here, um, on a practical sense, you can simply export this information into a data source that you've connected. So let's say, for example, you'll be exporting this into Dynamics 365 Marketing so that you can use these groups um, as a customer segment when you run promotional campaigns. Now, also, you can export this to Excel in case you'd want to do an offline um, interpretation or calculation of the data. Then you can also have this information uh, on the segments. Uh, you can also have this uh, be accessed via API. So the ease of integration is also embedded in there already. Now let's take a look at the average high span churn to understand it further. So we can see here that there's 314 members. That's what we've seen earlier. And in terms of um, time period, this chart is giving us uh, the performances of the last 30 days. And we can see that there has been none for this week um, in terms of churn. And this is the data that we see. Now, if we hover a mouse over it, it's telling us that the evaluation time was about a month ago, ago and the segment size is 314. And if we go to, if we scroll down further right here, we see the segment members and all their information. So we see information around uh, first name, last name, full name, the date of birth, ge the gender, etc. Now, if we take, so this is the report that, that we're getting, but let's just take a look at the setup for this particular um, segment. Now, if we, I just clicked on edit right there, and we can see here that to understand further um, what this segment is uh, being set up for is that it has two conditions with a, condi with a combination of intersection. So right now, the, the, for the group one right here, we said we are looking for um, customers who has high, who has cord probabilities that's greater than seven because we're looking for a high churn value. So uh, 0.7 is a high, um, high churn. So it's 
0.7, greater than 0.7, so it's looking through all records for that. And in that data set, we are looking for a common, uh, we, we're looking for records that would have, that would be average, average spenders. So that would be spenders of between 600 to 800. So the total online spend should be greater than 600 and the total online spend should be um, less than 800. Now with this, we mentioned uh, we, we wanted an intersect um, relationship right there, but we can also have, in a sense, we can create segments, um, we can have groups and create a union for them or do an exception. Uh, in order to come up with a segment. So I can always add more groups here as I need to. Now let's go back. And we see here that uh, the other segments that are available, um, and these are the ones that we've seen earlier as well from the dashboard. We have customers with open cases that totals to 8,432. We have customers who have given a low review score that totals to 600, sorry, 6,812. Then we have the average spend high churn of 314 members. And of course, the all customers, so the complete data set of 10,000. And of course, we have the customers with open cases expansion, which is 630. So again, all of this can be exported um, either through a, uh, another system or it can also be accessed via API. So that ends the brief overview of the activities and the interface or the tool that will be used by the data engineer as well as the analytics officer. So in our personas, that would be Dog, the data dude, and Alex, the analytics ace. So then it would now be going to the next person who's going to be uh, managing it, um, doing or controlling the insights, as well as um, getting to machine learning um, information right there so that it can be used for practical business outcomes. Okay, so now that we've seen how technically how customer insights would work and how it can be used by the data engineers as well as analytics um, officers, um, we then check on the convenience um, of what modern data platform can offer us. So for, for right now it's said that people want to outsource the work of getting products. Instead, instead of focusing on the act of purchasing products, they want to focus on the act of using them. So that's what appears to really matter. So what we're just saying here simply is that um, people or customers right now do, want, do not want to spend time on, um, on buying this product. Instead, they want to focus more on the usability, like the product is already there. So the main answer for this is, of course, if we have an efficient product recommendation, then we'd be able to get a big chunk of this customer demand. So there's about 91% of, on the product recommendations, there's 91% of customers that are more likely to shop with brands who recognize them, who remember what they've bought, and who provide relevant offers and recommendations to them, of course, at the perfect timing. Then also, there's the, the, the convenience um, overall um, provides us or is telling us that 43% of customers would pay for greater convenience. It's not about the price anymore as much as the convenience really that is being offered. And this is based on Deloitte's retail um, industry study um, outlook for 2020. Now we have seen um, in what you've seen earlier. So as an outcome, say for example, we have, uh, we created a new uh, quick segment wherein we got customers on the top state by, uh, top state by customers. Uh, so we know which states are performing well. Then we also can convert it just by checking on review. We can convert and uh, this data and realize that the estimated segment size is about there's 3,138 customers and that comprises 31.38% of the total customers that we have. So this is how easily we can have it. Now on this segment, um, we did that under the profile. There's also another way of getting segments wherein you do it by measures. Uh, as explained earlier, this measures would be those um, logic that we have embedded based on just about any customer information. It could be um, it could be behavioral, transactional, et cetera. So in this case, we are looking at the total online spend measure 
and we identified that we want to look at those that are greater than 2,500. And it's giving us information that there's about 1,490 customers out of that data set. And that's about 14.90% of the total customer base. And with the segments, you're not able to export this um, to make, you know, to take actions on, on this. So you can have, you can either um, send it via using API, you can send it to Dynamics 365 Sales Hub, you can send it to Teams, you can send it to Power Automate for any workflow or automations that you would want to have. You can send it to Sales and Power BI for reporting. So as you can see here, there's a lot of, um, there's over 35 systems that you can um, send it to uh, or export it to. So that in already covers, as mentioned earlier, the integration part. Now, as an example, we have a Power BI example here for Coffee, Coffee Beans and Co. So there's a campaign performance dashboard and you can see the customer sales metrics, campaign engagement metrics, and the campaign driven sales. Now, behind the scene would be customer insights that's that's allowing us to get information from the different data sources and returning back um, into the campaign model, we're able to come up with this information. So we see that there's about 13,703 total customers and about 11 of which, 11,000 of which have subscribed uh, for a total of 305 campaigns. Um, and it, there is a total sent of 4, uh, 423,225, et cetera. So in total, we're able to derive that the engagement rate is 54.1%. Now, also there's another example, and this is for Contoso Coffee, where we're looking at a customer. So Nancy DeCastro right here, we have all, we have the demographics, we have the information, then we have the activity as to what she has um, done. And uh, we can look also at the customer check-in to check on the club membership and activities that she has, then we see that there's about 158 current points that she has currently and a lifetime uh, sales value of 4,472. Of course, there would be recommendations as well. So these are just a couple of um, examples of, of systems that are um, having customer insights running on, on the background. And so what this is offering um, to us on a nutshell would be um, how we can control the churn rate. Of course, we want to achieve a, a low churn rate and how best we can provide recommendations to our customers. So in here, we see that we have a pool of loyal customers out of which we're able to identify which of these customers have a high value, um, who are considered as high, high value, low risk, and which ones are high value, high risk. So we want to focus more on those high value, high risk, and see how we can target um, these customers with the right product recommendations at the right time. And so to, to close out this discussion um, today, um, modern data platform uh, is, is one way of um, showing you um, how, we, how we can do this digital transformation. And um, right here is a typical modern data platform and it shows us where customer insights would fall under. So as you can see here, well, those in orange are more on analytics. The green ones would be on data movement. Blue ones are raw data. And the ones in um, purple would be clean data. So if we take a look at this, Dynamics Insights falls under this box along with customer engagement and unified operations, which falls under raw data because we do ingestion, mapping, merging, et cetera, down to, doing, uh, down to segmentation. It falls under the raw data, then we are connected to the different integration interfaces. So there, this is where the data movement happens. Then it either sends forth or receives um, data from different other systems. So we have IoT or, or event, we have web or mobile, we have custom solutions, data center, um, and SaaS. And with this data movement, it is then being forwarded on a, well, a two-way direction towards the data lake. So data lake now processes the data and this is where we can have uh, the cleansed data uh, reside. Then also we have data governments, which is also a result of the data movement. And as a result, we have analytics that are derived from it that would be forwarded to data warehouse. Then we create the data mo models from there. So this would include self-service analytics, enterprise reports, enterprise dashboards, as well as data science. And then, also, in terms of predictive analytics, we're able to get from data governance and the raw data on the dynamic system, we're able to have an operational model, which gives us operational analytics and operational reporting. So as you can see here, 
Um, this all in all would be the digital transformation and where customer insights would fall under. So that caps off our discussion for today. Um, um, I would just like to cap it off with, um, well, a thank you note. So thank you everyone for uh, joining us. And we have reflected right here, our um, general email where we can always send us, in, uh, you can send us requests for demo or even um, any assistance that you may uh, wanna have on your customer insight initiative and just send it please to info at hitachisolutions.com. And we've also reflected our different handles in social media. So we have LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram.